<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Vibe with Kai podcast. It's your boy, Kai. And today, super excited to be introducing to you our very special guest today, Vivian Isebor. Vivian mm-hmm. is the amazing founder of ADHD Babes, a support group of Black women and non-binary people with ADHD. The fun, the fun stuff. ADHD, we all know and love it. <laughs> she is the leader of the ADHD community and works hard to help people feel seen and supported. In this episode, we'll dive into Vivian's journey with ADHD and learn how ADHD babes are making a difference. We'll also talk about how ADHD shows up differently in women of color and why it's so important to have spaces like ADHD babes. Plus, for all of the subscribers that are out there, we are going to play a fun game of Would You Rather, and that will be made available for the subscribers on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. So make sure you go subscribe so you can go watch that and uh, and ha- watch us have some fun. So with that being said, hi, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And so so just to give people uh, some insight into where we are location wise, I am in the United States of America and, and you are not. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what country are you in right now? I'm in the United Kingdom, specifically in England, again, specifically in London. And for the <laughs> Londoners, I'll big up North London always. <laughs> you know what's funny? I am, I've always wanted to go to the UK, specifically London. I've always wanted to go. And I'll tell you the exact moment when. It's when the Olympics were in London. I remember mm, watching. Yeah, I remember watching. I'm like, that place looks so cool. <laughs> uh, and then I, I used to work at a place that um, was based out of Newcastle upon Tyne. Mm. Uh, which I don't know where it is geographically <laughs> it's yeah. at all. Um, but but they all they were all they were all so sweet and kind. I'm like I need to make my way out there. So when I come out there, you're gonna have to show me around because I listen. I, I'm, I'm ready. Get lost. That's it. Get lost and get found again. We'll catch a real vibe. <laughs> I'm gonna get so lost because you you guys you, you drive on the wrong side and stuff and like you know. That's you. That's like, you. I, like, what am I going to do? I'm going to get lost, but it's okay. I got you. I got you to take care of me. Yeah. And it's all part of the fun. Getting lost is yeah. part of the adventure. So. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and with my ADHD, if I get lost, there's no guarantee that I'm going to make it back. So This is why <laughs> uh, I have it with my dyspraxia as well. So yeah. yeah oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Uh, and that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about ADHD. So if you don't mind, uh, can, let's start off by telling people a little bit about yourself and your journey with ADHD. How how mm-hmm. has that been for you? Yes. Yeah, so it actually started after I finished uni. So prior to that, I did get diagnosed with dyslexia and dyspraxia in like my second year of uni. So they definitely noticed like something was up, like always handing in assignments late, yeah. always late to lecture or forgetting the lecture exists. Like just yeah. <laughs> a bunch of like all the very, um, very common experiences. But then it was after uni when I was, traveling and I was traveling for three months in Sri Lanka and that was the first time I was really like no something is up like something Mm. is not quite right Mm -hmm. and then when I got back I was working for an organization called the National Autistic Society okay um and with the training and stuff I was like no this is me like (laughs) they're describing me to a key so from there I asked to be assessed by my GP for autism and I was like no you don't fit the criteria for autism but you screen really highly for ADHD so fast forward like six months or so, I'm doing the assessment over like three sessions and they're like, yeah, you've got, yeah, you've got, you've got ADHD. So that was the start of it. So when you were diagnosed, what was, what, what was going through your head? Like, did you go through, cause I know for me, when I was diagnosed, I went through like this wide range of emotions, you know, kind of like, kind of like a grieving process in a way. Mm-hmm. What, when you were diagnosed, what was going through your head? When um when I think about this question, like you know that meme where is it LeBron James where he gets up from a, oh, a from the press conference? conference? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was me. I said what? <laughs> Whatever, man. Like <laughs> all these medical guys are just trying to over medicalize me. They don't yeah. know me from anywhere. I was not having it. Like I I when I read the assessment, I literally like put it back in my drawer. I was not not having it so I was definitely in the denial stage for a long period of time and it was only after um I started seeing somebody and they were like really into research and understanding the world so Mm -hmm. when they found out I had ADHD they then started like doing a deep dive into understanding what it was and that their enthusiasm was what actually got me back into like okay 
maybe I should check this out. Right, right. One of the things that I, I loved um, is, is that you mentioned that ADHD uh, means living life with the volume turned all the way up. Like, I love that. I love that <laughs> phrase so much. Can you elaborate how this manifest into your day-to-day -day life like like when you're living a life with the volume all the way turned up how does that manifest into your life mm. so it's things like if i don't plan in on a regular basis <clears throat> ways to kind of reduce my stress levels or to like right. offset it just feels like being on a 10 all the time but not like that's the thing, it's not always in the happy 10. Cause sometimes I love being the happy 10. I'm like, yeah, yeah man, life is good. <laughs> life is beautiful, life is amazing. Yeah. Like bubbly, bringing the vibe. But then sometimes that means like, literally just getting on the train. I'm like, my world is falling apart. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't be here. And it's literally yeah. just because the train is too noisy. I feel like I'm too close to people. So now I'm physically overstimulated. I'm late to where I'm going, so I'm stressed about, I'm overthinking that when I get there, how am I gonna slip in without being noticed? They always think I'm late. Maybe everybody hates me. Like it just the, everything that is a kind of common part of being alive just feels yeah. so heightened in a good and a bad way. So it's like in a good sense, it means that like, when I like love and care about people and things, it feels like this is the best thing in the world. Like this is, this is, mm -hmm. this is what heaven is like, but then yeah, right. it kind of flips between the two. And often I don't really get to experience the middle. Um, I don't really get to experience five out of tens. So it, yeah, it's really, it's really heavy and really exciting at the same time. Right. Right. I, I love that ADHD babes gives uh, a, a space for women of color um, because at least for me, when I was growing up, talking about mental health in general, in mm -hmm. my community, in the black community was just not, that was just not a thing that, that was talked about, let alone held uh, a space held for it. With ADHD babes, it's become such an important organization for people, especially women of color. What made you decide to take on such a, such a important you know, task and responsibility. What, what did, was it a specific moment that you were like, I need to expand this to help people or like, mm. what, what was the story behind that? Yeah. So again, like credit to my ex, yeah. <laughs> like I, <do. laughs> I have to pick them up because it was their research, like them, like being so on it, like, let's go to this support group. And, oh, I just found this thing online that says that people with ADHD struggle with emotional regulation. Like all of that was really supportive. Um, but the difficulty is when they were finding support groups and stuff, I was always the um, youngest there and I was always the only mm. black person there. So mm. I just didn't want to go. I was like, when we walk in, like I don't feel like they were expecting us to come. I don't think they had me in mind when they planned this group. Um, and that was my reasoning. And they were very much like, okay, well, why don't you just make your own? And I was right. like, oh, all right, cool. Like that's a good right. idea. Um, and right. it literally like stemmed from there, like that lack of, space where I could find people that understood what ADHD meant for me, like as a, as a black woman. Um, and then it was a Facebook group and then that grew and then it was a WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. And again, that grew. And really like the, the moment after that was in the middle of lockdown where locked in the house, that's where a lot of us, like our ADHD started ramping up because oh, yeah. we didn't have our support systems. We didn't have our routines. Um, and one of the first babes that joined our WhatsApp group and became a co-founder, um, she like suggested that, hey, why don't we just jump on Zoom? Um, so we did that a couple of times and then we kind of met after that and it's like, wow, there's actually a demand for this. Like people want to be in community, even though it's it's just online. Um, and then from there, like we kind of met and decided that, yeah, let's make this public, let's get a name, let's jump on socials. Right. And it was, yeah, really that need in the lockdown that highlighted how much we deserve the space. Right, right. And it's, it's such a beautiful thing because it's just not, it's not talked about enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not there's just not a lot of uh, conversations throughout. It's gotten better. Yeah. Thankfully. It's definitely gotten better, but we still have a long way to go, mm -hmm. um, especially in, in our community. Um, how does ADHD babes help? Right. So like what, what do you do to help people address the unique challenges faced, you know, by us with ADHD? Mm -hmm. So I think we started off, with just a support group like that was all we did yeah. um 
and then naturally like so I have a background in psychology so kind of using some of the information I know from there in terms of like asking people what kind of support you want and looking at okay how do you have a, like a person tailored approach but also a community psychology approach as well where it's like right. actually how do you do things as a collective so based on like feedback and surveys that um I, I would send out now it looks well what I envisage is that we do like a how do we ground first like how do we root ourselves so we do a lot of things that are about like well-being collective healing so we ha we have like our weekly um and bi-weekly peer support spaces um and then we also meet up in person now that like we're allowed outside right we meet in person we do social things um as well as like well-being specific so we have psychologists come and do sessions um this year we launched our first self-esteem course looking at adhd and self-esteem yeah. um so yeah just things that are about like our actual well-being like how do we feel grounded and well in ourselves um and then also improve that access to psychiatric support so we support people in getting the clinical diagnosis because it's like again if we're like if we don't have the tools and the support to manage like how are we supposed to do anything else like mm -hmm. it actually impacts our day to day right. um so we do that and then beyond that it's like all right if we then are able to ground and like feel okay in ourselves like how can we then maximize like how can we expand how can we live a life that's like high quality to us so then that looks like us um doing like we do a lot of art related things so we do art workshops we've been looking at how do we advocate for ourselves through the arts mm -hmm. um as well as that we've moved into research so we're going to release our first research paper looking at black women's experience with late diagnosis of adhd um and yeah leaning into that like system change like how do we make so we can create safe spaces for ourselves yeah. like how can we make the whole world more inclusive of difference so that means we're not just only safe when we're together that we can actually live our lives freely right. um, so yes yeah, it's, it's a mix of those right what have what have you learned from mm -hmm. being from this organization you know uh from the beginning stage like you, obviously from your diagnosis and then it led to the beginning of this uh, organization that's helped so many people since its inception mm. have you learned anything about you that you're just like like you're just like wow okay mm. <laughs> this, was, this is new <laughs> yeah um do you know what? i didn't realize i didn't realize how much I, I was not living a unique experience. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. I really thought, I mean, fairly, that, like, my experiences are mine. Like, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. this is my quirk. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so different. But people will say stuff in the support group, and I'm like, what in the <laughs> world is going <laughs> on? Like, like, you how? realize you're not alone. Like, it's a, it's a very validating, it's a very validating kind of experience. Yeah. So I, I think that, that thing of like me feeling like there's something wrong with me yeah. and like I'm yeah I've just never really felt normal I've never really felt like I fit in fully mm -hmm. even though like I've always had friends and funny enough a lot of my friends we've all later been di diagnosed with different like neuro neurotypes mm -hmm. um but still like I've always just felt like there's something ever so slightly not working but yeah I don't I no longer think that there is something wrong with me right I don't think that like I'm strange or like I'm odd. I'm like, actually, I'm just different, mm -hmm. just like a whole bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably been the biggest takeaway because that feeling of feeling alone is, is really deafening. Yeah. 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 What about the non ADHD people in your life? Like how has it been since your diagnosis with them? Have you seen su like support? Have you spent, had to spend mm -hmm. a lot of time educating them? Like what has that experience been like for you since your diagnosis? Um, do you know what? Not really. Mm -hmm. I don't think the people specifically in my life I've had to do much work with because it, it's turn, it turns out that a lot of them are also neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. um, so there's already been like a level of understanding. There's maybe a little bit of like mm -hmm. explaining how to get a diagnosis or right. what it might look like on a day to day. Um, but generally, I've been really lucky to have people around me that are really accommodating and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more been in work that mm -hmm. I've struggled to like well i've had to try and advocate a bit more um little things like having keeping the flexible working that we had during right. lockdown um and saying that yeah actually i need this like this is something that's important for me um mm -hmm. yeah it's been more in the workplace that i think people right. misunderstand I, I hear that a lot <clears throat> from uh the dms that i get the emails and comments that the workplace is a place that people really do struggle Mm -hmm. like me included you know 
with my work day that like ADHD really can take its toll on us. So mm-hmm. with that said, if there is anybody that's listening right now that does struggle with their ADHD in the workplace, what would you say to them right now? I would say, I guess if it's UK specific, I would say look into access to work, mm-hmm. um, which is a scheme that is paid by the government where they um, offer you a reasonable assess a reasonable reasonable adjustment assessment, and they will pay eighty percent up. To, well, yeah, minimum of eighty percent, sometimes up to one hundred percent of some adjustments for you, mm-hmm. and that can look like equipment. It can look like um, ADHD coaching. It can be a VA. There's like a mix of, of things you can get. Um, and then also like as far as you feel comfortable speaking to your occupational health, your HR, and this is kind of across the board wherever you are because it is a protected disability um obviously every country will have different laws but generally it's classified as a disability that is protected so reasonable adjustments obviously is a great area but it does mean that there is something that your organization owes you in terms of a duty of care Mm -hmm. so i'd really lean into the fact that you're not asking for too much like you're asking for what you need to be the best version of yourself Mm -hmm. um so yeah I i would lean into that and just remind yourself that if it was a personal problem it wouldn't be such a common difficulty that all of us are talking about. So right. it's clearly something that is situated in the way systems are built rather than situated in us. Right. It, it's it's do, it's documented pretty heavily <clears throat> how ADHD shows up differently in men than it does for women and, and all mm-hmm. of that. Do you feel as though it shows up differently for people of color uh, mm-hmm. than to, let's just, for this, for this example, you know, Caucasian, like white people, does it, do you think it shows up differently for people of color than white people? Yeah, I do. Um, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. I think even when I think of myself, um, <clears throat> and I think about how my ADHD looked as a child, there were definitely things there that were very evident, but like I grew up in a very strict Christian Nigerian household. Like there was, there's only sure. certain things that were going to be tolerated within within my household that would then manifest in school. And then I was being called the angry child that needed, um, yeah, the child that needed anger management or I'm getting excluded for getting into Mm -hmm. fights and things like that. So I think, especially for um, women or people that are socialized as women, there's an expectation of us to act in a certain way within the black community. Like you're supposed to be organized. You're supposed to, um, you know, especially if you're the eldest daughter, you're supposed to be looking after everybody else. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be a nurturer, well put together. Mm-hmm. You know, you're supposed to juggle all of these things. So in the kind of standing of, okay, I'm supposed to be this while I'm juggling all of these executive functioning, I think the way masking shows up for us is almost like triple masking, whereas, you know, it's the neurodivergence, then it's the gender, then it's the race. Like we're constantly needing to fit into boxes where our needs aren't being articulated or seen by people. Um, so yeah, I think even like there's people that we've supported to get a diagnosis where they've got to the end where they've been like, yeah, you know, clinicians have seen them, um, and said, yeah, you know, you fit the criteria, but you're not struggling enough. Mm. It's like, well, is that the way it works? If, if you've had your whole life of needing to mask because, you know, oh, okay, you've passed your exams and you've got to university. Is that because you didn't have ADHD or is that because you had to work four times as hard because that's what you've been told as a black child growing up? Mm -hmm. um so yeah i think there's definitely something missed there in terms of as long as we show up in the way they ask our struggle is not seen or cared about um and i think that's that's often how it might show up differently for us what what do you think we can do as a community you know like uh, taking the outside you know things things outside of our community's control Hmm. um what do you think we as a community particularly people of color can do to help raise awareness and empower the community, not just from an ADHD standpoint, but from a mental health standpoint in general, mm. what do you think we can do or do better? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we are improving for sure. Like the conversation's happening so much and like the generation below me, like, are they Gen Z? I don't know. But those guys, they're really doing their part. Like mm-hmm. they're very, very much mm-hmm. um, open about talking about mental health and neurodivergence yeah. and disability. But yeah, I think it's continuing the conversations in a really honest way. I think that the the thing with stigma is it exists in silence. So mm-hmm. I think the more things are spoken and said out loud in a way that is like compassionate, because it's not everybody that right. you can be honest with. So I think it's really, again, being honest with that 
in and of itself. So in spaces that are peer safe, in spaces that are full of allyship and people that are like willing and open, it's also being wrong and like kind of shedding things that they have carried or thoughts and ideas that they've carried. I think having that open dialogue, even if it's just between one person, like you never know how far that one conversation you have with someone will go into a wider space. So I think, yeah, on an individual and collective level, being able to be open about these things and then it's the okay now that we've said this is what ADHD shows up for me so for example I know that I can get overwhelmed if I um I like I get overwhelmed with un unlike solicited calls like if I see a number calling I'm like oh my god um what if they're gonna ask for this and I'm not ready and like the overthinking kicks in so I've been able to communicate that to people where it's like if you like you can call unprovoked, but it's going to stress me out. Mm -hmm. It would be much better if you actually text me. And some people have taken that on and that's what they'll do. They'll say, hey, I'm going to call about X. So now I don't have to have Mm -hmm. a a panic wondering why they're calling me and what's gone wrong. So I think it's in the honest communication, then how can we as a collective with the capacity we have accommodate people where they are? Right, right. Do do you Mm. think things would be better if we had, I mean, this is kind of a leading question here, but, (laughs) um, but do you think things would be better if we had there's clearly a lack of representation for Mm -hmm. our community in ADHD research diagnosis and in the healthcare community. I I know it's like that here in the U S I'm pretty sure it's the same in the UK. It's the same. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's the same thing. Um, I know this is a leading question uh, and I already know the answer kind of, but (laughs) do you think that things would be better if we had more representation in ADHD research and diagnosis in the healthcare system? Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a definite yes. <laughs> like, it goes without saying, right? It's just like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> it's essential. But yeah. the guess is like in capitals and like with loads of exclamation right. marks. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I just, it's funny because uh, even from a uh, healthcare standpoint or, or a therapy standpoint, I remember mm-hmm. when uh, I was first trying to get uh, help from a therapist, right? Mm-hmm. And I live in an area, I live right outside of Philadelphia and Philadelphia is a, it, it's a lot of many minorities <laughs> and many, many, you know, predominantly black, right? At mm-hmm. times in certain areas. Um, but finding a doctor, a, a therapist, especially male, mm-hmm. um, that could understand from my standpoint, what I was going through was very difficult. And, and mm. by standpoint, I mean, not just ADHD in general, but just like ADHD as a black man, mm. uh, a, a black man with the late diagnosis, like I was diagnosed when I was 35, mm. <laughs> you know, and it was hard for me. And I, I still haven't really found anybody for that. But like, I go to a wonderful therapist, and she's amazing. And, and she's yeah. great. But most of the therapists that I saw were you know white women Mm -hmm. uh and like that like those were the choices that i had and i'm like man how cool would it be if we had black men and women people of color Mm. um in these positions to help and it's not something that can happen overnight because like these people have to be trained they have to be educated they have to go through all the stuff and and the communities that we come from, it's just, it's not fostering that kind of environment, mm. uh, at least here in the US. Do you feel it's the same in the UK as well? Mm. Yeah, I think there's definitely like a, you know, we're, we're already the minority. And yeah. then you add on like within fields like medicine and psychology, mm-hmm. like our, our like clinical psychology doctorate, the percentage of people who are black that get onto the doctorate is incredibly low. And it's been historically incredibly low. It's true for Asian folk as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a lack of our presence within these fields where actually that's where decisions are being made. Yes. That's what they're basing policies of. And like you said, if like you personally wanting to go and seek support, like mm-hmm. it's hard to see faces that look like yours. Yeah. Um, so I think it is. Yeah, it is. It is an issue that is that's one of the things that we try and uh, challenge with ADHD Braves, where the therapists and the psychiatrists that we work with we try and look for people from our community who have either lived experience or like specialized experience in working with us. Cause that like ethnic match matching and like knowing that even if they don't fully relate, they might have like a background understanding of your culture, or at least you just see yourself represented in what's happening. So you might not need to explain certain nuances um, because they've, they've experienced it or they at least they're in uh, some kind of proximity to it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What, what are some misconceptions 
about ADHD mm -hmm. specifically for for women of color, or you can just talk about women in general. Are there mm -hmm. any are there any misconceptions that you feel that are out there that that should be cleared up? I think the big one for me is this thing that like people assume if you have ADHD, you can't do anything. <laughs> right. It's like, <laughs> yeah. what, it's just, I just find it so bizarre. Like, and it's not even just from, it's even people within the medical field. Yeah. Like you have no excuse, but <laughs> I've literally yeah. heard people that, oh, but they've been to university. So, so what? What, right. what does that mean? Like, right. it's, it's not, and I don't, and I think it's, you know, partly due to the, the name not being very accurate in this description, but people have this concept that, um, you know, if, you know, this woman has gone to uni, um, she's well put together by their standards, um, even like she's got a family, you know, she's, yeah. she's a mother of two. It's like, oh, but you're doing all of this, you know, how can you have ADHD? And I think it's that, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a, it's kind of rooted in ableism really, because it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. You assume that somebody is incapable of doing something with a diagnosis of a certain thing, mm -hmm. but it's like that's not the way disability works. Right. Um, so I think that misconception is a blocker because it means that people are showing up struggling with things, but because people are looking at, oh, but you know, you've you've got a full time job and you're looking after your kids, and look, your hair is slicked back, right. therefore you can't be that bad. Right. So I think that assumption that if someone appears well kept to you, that they're fine, it's mm -hmm. it's like you don't know what's happening. Like my tutor at uni said it to me once where she was like, you're like a duck where like, no, a swan, where on the top, it's like you're kind of streaming across the water, but underneath, like your feet yeah. are like going <laughs> well. <laughs> it looks like, so graceful it. above the water, but underneath the water, you're like, ah, come on, no, let's no, go. Help me. <laughs> so that assumption that if we're like on right. the water and we're, we're like streaming, that, oh no, right. they're fine. And then right. we get missed and we don't get supported. Or we even, when we do speak out, it's like, no, but you're doing this fine all this time. So we're not, it's diminished. Right, I think that. Right, right. What is, what is the response to ADHD babes been, you know, for you? Like, what is, what is it like, to, do you like, do you, do people contact you and they're like, thank you so much? Like, you know, like yeah. what, what is, what is that been? And how does that make you feel? Yeah. Do you know what? It's been, it's been a real mixed bag. Um, I think especially when we first started in the lockdown, there was a couple kind of trolls online, like, why oh, is this only for black people? Nah. Right, like, right. Okay, well, I can send you a bunch of stats if that helps, right. but I don't think you care. <laughs> I'm not gonna read them. <laughs> exactly, you no. You'll just comment let, on the new let account. Read it, let alone understand what the what it's saying, so. Right? <laughs> so there was that, there was that for a yeah. while. That, that still comes up every so often. Um, but predominantly it's been, really inspiring and it's been yeah truly like i don't think i could have continued without some of the feedback that i hear from people right. um you know people have passed their driving test after like you know yeah. failing for six years and people right. have you know passed their um their degrees and like someone did their because we do weekly body doubling um mm -hmm. someone was coming to the weekly body doubling and finishing right. their dissertation and like they've credited us in the Oh, in the gratitude yeah. yeah so it's like right from you know seeing people get a diagnosis and like start new careers or like leave careers like someone i bumped into them i hadn't seen them for a couple of years actually and it was like after coming to a couple of the support groups and like hearing people talking about their careers and entrepreneurship she was like why am i not doing what i want uh -huh. and she did she changed careers and she's like you know i've started my own initiative like i'm working in the creative industry now and i i got that from the support group like from seeing other black women that look like me yeah. with ADHD, but still doing their thing. Like I said, why not? Um, yeah. And people have literally said that, yeah, there, there was at really dark places where they've, that, that feeling of isolation and like nothing is going right was getting so heavy, but they felt like actually, no, now that I find myself in community, like that will to live is, has come back. So I mm -hmm. think, yeah, it's been, and even from the team as well, like, cause everyone originally, we didn't have any funding. So everyone kind of joined as a volunteer, but now it's like, we can actually pay people for a rata or right. like per session and seeing people's development and growth from like coming yeah. in and being shy to speak, but now like holding their own sessions and spaces, right. like it's, right. yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's been a game changer. So what's next? So like, what, where do you, where do you see things going now? I mean, you have the established success of, a, of, of ADHD babes, you yourself mm -hmm. are you know, becoming a, a fixture in, in the community mm -hmm. and, and working Thank on you. yourself and taking yourself to the next level. 
for ADHD babes, what's the next step? Like, where do you want to see things go now? I really want to see us grow. Um, I would love to have our own space, like our own physical space. Um, mm-hmm. I think that would be a really big, like, pivot for us because um, mm-hmm. yeah, predominantly we meet online. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, moving into that, I think definitely expanding on this research and system change work because I think uh, for the first, so we're turning four in October, it's been very much like creating the community itself mm-hmm. and, like, listening to what the community asked for and like trying to turn that into Mm -hmm. something that is sustainable. So I think once we hit a space where it's like, no, this is actually sustainable. Like we have enough money to keep things going. We can keep our sessions free. We can keep our membership really low. Like that is sustained. Like now, cool. How can we like go out there and really make system change, whether it's changing policy, where it's like, you know, actually going into the NHS and figuring out how can we make this experience for neurodivergent folk better? Even if we can't reduce the waiting times, how do we support people on the waiting list, for example? Like actually like the model that we've created internally that we find is working, how can we share that with the wider wider, um, disabled community? Um, And yeah, just more joy. Like Mm -hmm. we have a good time when we link up. Like we, the the belly laughs, the, the banter, the jokes, the vibes, like more moments in space for like black babe joy i think right, I'm, right. I'm here for that's, that that's amazing like honestly what you and your team are, are doing is phenomenal and it Thank clearly you. has uh effects around the globe because i mean you and i met yeah <laughs> you know so like we know each other and like and i i think that's also like the beauty of, of technology like i know you were talking about how you know mm-hmm. it would be great to have a physical space but it's also really nice to be able to connect with people that mm-hmm. you might not have crossed paths with like our paths probably would have never no. crossed you know um but but here we are <laughs> Thank yeah, you, technology. Catching yeah. <laughs> you know which is which is great um before we wrap up uh, here, uh, I, I want to, uh, again, uh, thank you for, for your insight, your knowledge, your, uh, your work in this uh, community. It's like, please don't stop. We, we need you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, listen, do you know what? And this is one thing I've got to add. The yeah. next stage I really want is one for the bros. Are you guys ready? I'm here for the bros. Yeah, we, need, we need some help too. Some That's what I'm saying. Girls. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. But I can't lead on it because I'm not a man. But when That's you guys fair. are ready, shout me. I'm here That's for fair. it. That's fair. That's fine. That's fair. We gotta get. We gotta. Yeah. We gotta get, get some bro love up in That's here. That's it, man. We're on the struggle bus. You know, like you're I'm talking about. Get being, you off. You're talking about being a swan, like in paddling. We are. We're drowning. We're just like. Nah. <laughs> I'm trying to drag you up like now. You'll be all right, bro. It's like help us, please. Right. <laughs> oh my so god. So we're um, <laughs> So the bros listening. Uh, <laughs> no, we definitely need the help. Um, so, and for all of the uh, subscribers that are that are listening, once again, uh, at the end of this uh, podcast, I'm going to be playing a fun game uh, with our guest today. So make sure you subscribe and. You can subscribe on either Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, and you'll get to see a, a nice little extra uh, added in there. Um, with that said, it's going to be fun. I'm excited for it. I love, yeah. I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, with that said, uh, again, I was saying before, a lot of um, my audience are, are women. Uh, a lot of them have ADHD uh, or are you know, considering either getting tested or really mm. do think that they have ADHD. And there's, there's, the struggle is real. Like we both know from our own personal mm-hmm. experiences, the struggle, uh, what it's like. What would you say as just some final words of wisdom or mm-hmm. encouragement to those women that are listening right now that are like ADHD? Ah, mm-hmm. <laughs> what would you, what would you say to them right now? Uh, it's okay that it's not always perfect um i think the one of the things that's helped me a lot is actually that like radical acceptance of i'm probably not always going to get it right all the time Mm -hmm. um it's not actually always going to be easy in fact it's probably harder than it is for someone without adhd Mm -hmm. and i think just like a reminder that it's actually okay and it's not a personal fault there's nothing wrong with you um you know you're not you're not choosing for life to be difficult. It's it's a neurotype that means that without support or in certain circumstances, things are harder, things are heavier, uh, things are overwhelming. So yeah, just like a soft reminder to go softly with yourself and to go slowly with yourself. And if it's not right today, 
you can always try again tomorrow and think about, okay, what can I give myself or what did I need or do I need to make that softer next time? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because it, it can improve. It does improve and you're not you're not alone in the experience. So. Right, right. Yeah. That's, am- that's amazing. I, I, I really do appreciate those words. I know that the people listening and watching are going to appreciate those words as well. Uh, if you're listening or you're watching to this and you're like, this is a cool person, I want to learn more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have, I'm going to include all of the ADHD babes uh, information in the description of this podcast that includes all of their social media handles, their website. Uh, all of that stuff will be there. So all you have to do is click, give them a follow. You're not going to regret it because there's some really good uh, information there for everybody. Um, thank you again so much. Thank you so much for, for sitting and, and chatting with me. I can't wait to chat with you for the subscribers in a couple minutes. Um, to everybody else uh, that was uh, that has been watching and listening, thank you so much for watching. As always, much love, good vibes, and I'll, call, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah.